And like, that's not a way of living, you know, to have a desk job where like you do the same thing over and over again and nothing else. Like those people will always go and look for something that they can at least find a little bit of happiness and to get away from it all. Yeah. Right. And I think that comes in a lot of different forms. And it seems like for you that came with wrestling, right? Obviously we're not working nine to fives or whatever, but petty in its own way is its own little stressful environment where it's hard to find ways to relax. And I think any small little thing that you could do like this or, you know, wrestling, or I think for me, a lot of that is like social stuff where like going out for dinner or whatever, like those little things to really just take your mind away from it all and, and find reasons to be happy and reasons to still have faith in humanity. You know, I think it's really, it's really beautiful how that can help you be successful in things that you aren't passionate about. But I will say at the same time, while I 100% agree with that, I think recently I've learned that sometimes those restrictions can make it even better, like those roadblocks, right? Mm-hmm. But for example, I always thought that, okay, how what's my ideal day? Like, what are the things I love? Like, I this is like one of the things I love the most, right? Working on these projects. Mm-hmm. I love wrestling. I love being with people I love. I like to hike and be in the outdoors. And I thought, oh my God, if I, if I didn't have the stupid school shit, I would just do that all day, every day, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's perfect life where I do that all day. And you know what? I kind of did that at some points, right? Like over Thanksgiving, that's what I did every day and it's fun. But there is something about having a restriction that holds it back that makes you appreciate it more. Yeah. Right? Like the fact that like, oh, finally the, finally the school day is over and I can go back to my room and work on this. I've been waiting for it all day and I'm so excited when it's there, you know? I think I'm still happy that I have those restrictions. And I think mm-hmm. you shouldn't use this as a way to just be like, oh, come on, I have this thing I have to do. Well, it, you don't want to end up in a passionless job and that's all you do. I think it's okay to have some form of restriction holding you back. That, like, well, you know, in terms of my wrestling career, I spent more than half of it not having any passion for it, you know? And it was that thing where I would be in school and I'd be like, I don't want to go to wrestling practice or I don't want to go to the wrestling match or the tournament over the weekend, right? But through how restricting it was, I learned how awesome it was, which is where I am now. I'm glad it worked right? out though. Right? Yeah, but like I think because I was able to look elsewhere and find those other points of passion, I was able to then look back at wrestling and find more passion in that, which I think goes to your point where it's like the way that you feel about things is very dynamic. Right. And one day you'll really love wrestling and another day you'll hate it. And one day you'll really love podcasting. And then you'll be another day you'll be like, Oh, I don't want to do this right now. But I think you have to allow yourself your the freedom to feel different ways about the same things as time goes along. Yeah. Which I think is why like, we we can kind of i think we're both <laughs> words are working hold on i think um i think like passion is so fluid and it's so based on just the way that you're feeling of the day and why you can do something you're not passionate about and that's fine if you do something you're passionate about and then they could switch you know i think a lot of those moments were like oh i love podcasts i love podcasting i love podcasting pat I love podcasting. I love podcasting. Oh my God, I hate it today. Mm-hmm. Right? I love wrestling. I love wrestling. Oh, today sucks, right? Yeah. I think those are not, I don't think we should use those as like the days we should really analyze our whole life yeah. and everything and start overthinking shit. Because I think those moments are like just emotional moments. Like yeah. Just cycling through emotions. And right? I think, like you said, the good moments can't exist without those moments, right? Because you can't love something forever. You know, there has to be roadblocks and there has to be moments where you're like, Oh, this sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. Because then when you find success in that, you'll be like, I got through that, you know, I lost that day so that I could win today. Or I got pinned when he did a half Nelson so that now I can learn how to defend a half Nelson, right? Like being able to learn from the losses and the moments of frustration is so deeply ingrained in all of our lives. And I think some people are so demoralized by failure which is something that I I am, you know, I'm demoralized by failure. And that's something that I've been through, you know, with wrestling, school, even like socially, like having like issues with people, those kinds of things. Like that's something that is hard to get past. But I think if you can kind of take a more big picture look at it and be like, yeah, but you know what, I'm going to go through this again and I'm going to do better the next time. Right. And be able to, gain something and learn from your losses because i mean that's that's all that wrestling is right no one is a state champion in their first year of wrestling right because you have to lose before you can win and it's the same exact way in life and that's why wrestling is training for the rest of your life right because 
in life, you will lose so many more times than you will win. And even if you win, you'll lose again. And you'll lose for even longer if you started out winning, because then you'll end up being all cocky and whatever. But you need to fail in life, right? You cannot be happy in life if you haven't failed. It's, it's all relative. Exactly. It's all relative. And I think you need to fail in your definitions of success to form new definitions of success to find happiness in that. But I'm a really big believer in the fact that you need to cry and you need to be upset and you need to be disappointed. And people adjust their expectations a lot. And people often try to lower their expectations to try and not be disappointed. And I've never been a big fan of that idea, right? Because I wouldn't be as happy as I am with wrestling now if I hadn't struggled with it so much when I was younger. And even in the past few years where I felt a lot of pressure and I've been able to adjust the way I feel about that, I needed to be hurt and I needed to be upset in order to get where I am today. You know, and I think people are so scared of that. People are so scared of taking that step and getting shot down, right? Or falling over. But you need to fail in life. Like, like it's, it's, it's impossible to not, first of all. But you need to accept failure with open arms. And it's hard. It's really hard. But I think if you can do that, you're stronger because of it. And that's something that I always try to live by. And it's, it's like I said, it's hard. You know, because so often I'll fail a test. I mean, I don't really like fail tests. But so often I'll do worse than I did. Or I'll go out and I'll lose a match and I'll be like, this sucks. I hate this. I need to be better. But if you feel that way, as opposed to going, I, I'm going to get better, right? And, and you know, I'm going through a tough time with my family or I'm having a tough time with this relationship, you know, I got broken up with. Um, this girl doesn't like me back. This girl rejected me. Those kinds of like stupid things that you feel as a teenager. It's like, it's whatever. Because you're going to learn from it, right? Because every time something happens, and Mr. Sham explained this to me last year, that as teenagers, sorry, I'm going on a big rant here. That's fine. As, as teenagers, um, our mind is so quick to think that everything we're going through is the last time we're going to go through it, right? You find love, and it ends, and you're like, I'll never find love again. Or you're, you win something, and you're like, it'll never happen again. Because you're just, you don't have that experience yet to know that things happen again in life and things need to stop happening before they can happen again. You know, like I think it's so hard to like be a human being, right? Like, and it's a very general statement, but I think it's true. Like we experience so much more sadness than we experience happiness. But the reason why is because happiness doesn't exist without sadness. And as a human being, if we experienced double the amount of happiness as we experience sadness, it wouldn't be genuine happiness, right? Because in wrestling, which I think is a perfect example, I have spent seven years of my wrestling career hating it. And even now I don't love it every day. But those one or two matches where I went out and I impressed myself and I did it for everyone else and I loved it every second of it when I was able to get my hand raised and look back at my team and say, this is what I worked a decade doing putting myself in this position for everyone else. And, and I've done it. It immediately made the decade before that worth it because it meant that I was finally, I mean, even when I was a nominated captain the other day, I stood up and the first thing I thought is I've worked so hard emotionally, mentally, physically, you know, socially being able to be a leader. I've worked so hard to get to where that position was. And I've hated so much of it. I mean, even going to college, right? Getting a job someday, you, you will never succeed anything without hating it for so long. And it's so oxymoronic, right? How like everyone's trying to be happy and you need to be sad to be happy and you need to hate everything before you can love everything. But I think if you can really just allow the process to happen that way and be able to be like, I'm sad and that's okay because someday I'll be happy. And I hate everything, but that's okay, because someday I'll love everything. If you can allow that to happen, then you'll be so much better for it. And it'll never be perfect, right? Because I say all this, and so so egalitarian, and so whatever. Um, and tomorrow, I'll go to practice, and I'll be like, this sucks, right? But still, like, it's you're always under construction, which is something I always try to remember. Um, but really, you just have to roll with the punches in life, because they're just going to keep going. <laughs> they're not going to stop.
Yeah. But someday you'll be able to punch back. And those days feel so great because of how many times you've been punched. Yeah, it's amazing, dude. It's also why I don't understand regret as a concept. Yeah. Like people say, oh, I like even like people who are happy, they'll kind of look back. I wish that didn't happen to me. Or I wish that period didn't happen. Or they'll look back and be like, yeah, that sucked. I wish it didn't happen. But like, it's all building, like the construction yeah. piece, like you're constantly like, getting there. Right? You're constantly like those hard moments built you to who you are right now. And if you yeah. love yourself right now, you better be grateful for all those parent mm-hmm. people and all the people who said shit to you, you better be grateful for them as well because they're part of the reason that you are who you are right now. Yeah, my cousin once told me, um, things don't happen to you, they happen for you. And I think it's just such a funny thing because like, it's exactly that. It's like, I'm not hurting right now. Like it's not a personal thing or it's not, something that you need to try to run away from lean into the pain lean into the failure because if you can lean into it then you'll be better because of it right and don't regret the fact that you made a step in the wrong direction be thankful for the fact that now you know another direction to try and that direction will probably fail too and maybe the last one will fail right you know you got to have plan a b c whatever all the way down to z and maybe even farther than that because you need to be able to plan if plan a fails then if plan B succeeds, it'll feel even better. And if that fails, then plan C will feel even better than that. And it's like, you shouldn't regret anything that you ever do, right? Because it's all a part of who you are. And humans are just a conglomeration of all the experience that they've ever been through, right? So why would you say, oh, why did I do that? Why did, like you said before, with I thought I wasted five years of my life wrestling if I was going to quit. I wouldn't, right? Because I'd still learn from it. And even if I quit, I would go and do something that I would learn from as well. Like, any time doing anything is never wasted. And I think that's something that if you can hold on to, it's a lot easier to feel good about yourself and about the stuff that you're doing. Yeah. I think that reminded me of something like when my dad was, I think we're all talking like as a family one time in the car or something. And we're talking about like parenting, I think. And he said that there's, he said he's pretty happy with how he like raised me or whatever. But he said, if there's one thing I would change, I wouldn't have let you play video games when you were growing up. And then like my mom's like, but are you sure? Like I, I I kind of known as like the guy like who hates video games so much mm. now because of how much I've spent wasting on them. Yeah. And then my mom's like, you think he would really hate it as much if you never gave it to him? Yeah. Or he'd be waiting for the day he finally escapes from that and he's able to do it himself. And then it would, he would never learn how much he hated it if he never experienced that, right? Yeah. And the piece you mentioned with like pain, right? I think you should just enjoy pain. Like yeah. enjoy it as an experience of life. Like be grateful that you've had every experience. You mm-hmm. know, and pain is just another fun experience to be through, right? Because... um. You're going to cycle through every emotion in life. And yeah. I'd rather feel the pain of like failing than the pain of complacency. Right. That's, that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I'd rather like, when I like fail big time or I feel really embarrassed or yeah. like, I feel like, fuck, I like really fucked up this time. I'll kind of just look and be like, well, I'm the only guy who actually went out and did what I wanted. Yeah. Do, right. Like, there's so many times where I felt like embarrassed. It's like really like, when I posted some of those videos and people were like talking about them, like it, I don't know why I just felt it. Sometimes it feels so embarrassing. Why yeah. the hell did I do that? Yeah. Right. Why the hell is he looking at this video that I posted and it's so cringe or whatever, but yeah. I'm kind of glad that I went out and did it. You know, like even when I was a child, I used to make so many like YouTube videos for fun. I just kind of enjoyed doing it. And I had a channel with like 372 videos or something like that. But then I, I kind of stopped working on it. And then like two years later, I'm sitting in like middle school and then like someone, like we're all doing like a group project in class. Everyone's kind of doing their thing. And someone pulls up my old YouTube channel and everyone's talking about it in class. Oof, oof, yeah, but it's cool. like, I'm glad I did it though. Cause I'm glad I went out and did what I wanted to do regardless of what anyone thought. Because now you could do this. Cause you yeah. learned you were passionate about it. Yeah, for sure. You know, but the pain of complacency, although like it feels fine right now that you won't have to feel the pain of like, failure but the pain of complacency compounds over time it does because you know in the back of your head that you're not reaching your full potential mm-hmm. and i think that's a lot of that like the success stuff that we talked about with the rich people who are sad it's because they never had the confidence or the ability to step out of the status quo say like, i don't care if you guys are upset with me because i'm gonna go paint in the woods or whatever like this is what i want to do right and they'll be embarrassed because of it and they'll hate it right because everyone hates stuff that they get judged for doing right, right? But then eventually they're good enough at it where those people who hated them and those people who put them down are now looking at their artwork in the mat, right? And it's just like that. It's like people who are strong enough to say, I don't care if this hurts you. I'm going to do my own thing, right? And you're not going to tell me where to stop. And your laughter isn't going to discourage me. I mean, it will, but it's not going to turn me away from what I'm doing, right? And keep on going and rolling with that pain then the success will feel all the better, right? Because Amazing. there's nothing better than proving people wrong, right? <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. It's You're saying, 
you thought I couldn't do this and you laughed at me, but here I am. My name is in the history books and where's your name, right? Yeah. You're just the kid who was in class with me. And honestly, like, we kind of use those like narratives in our head to kind of keep pushing us forward. Like, yeah. oh yeah, wait till they see me in seven years or whatever. Yeah. But then when you're there in seven years, like you, you'll forget they exist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, they're, they're all irrelevant. Like everyone around you is just so irrelevant. Like all the people <laughs> you think about that are so important to you, bro, like they're nothing, right? Like yeah. you think that these people, these 544 kids at Petty are the whole world. I think I really felt that dynamic when I went to my AXP lab. Because like, I go there and it's like this whole other world in New Hampshire. I meet so many new people there and I talk to so many new people. And I come back and I'm like, shit, I forgot this is how shit was over here. <laughs> You're like, shit around these irrelevant, bro. This world yeah. is huge. There's so many people in this world that like, all your problems, like the ones that you spend so much time thinking about, like they're nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just all, you just need a perspective change. Yeah. I also, I think because the world is so big and because there's so many people and it's so much bigger than this campus, like I, as someone who, like I said, I try to really understand people. One of my escapes from the stress of football and wrestling and school is this understanding of people and being able to appreciate the beauty of the world, right? I mean, from a very bigger standpoint, I mean, just think about the fact that anything even exists. Though, That's crazy. Right? Sometimes when you get into those, like, mental it's, zones, I know, like... <laughs> but it's, it's, it's really scary, but it's also, like, the fact that all of that could happen to lead to a moment where you and I could be sitting here and talking about it and realizing it and and going through everything we went through yesterday and everything we went through the day before that and everything we're going to go through in the next for the rest of our lives right be able to have a moment where you and i can sit here and both appreciate one another right and understand one another and gain a better appreciation for everything it's so beautiful right and i think if you could bring anyone on this podcast right and listen to their story right and talk to them you know whether it be coach frank or Massimo <laughs> Shining, or however you pronounce Shining. his last name. Shining. School name. Sorry, Shining. Mossy. Um, <laughs> if you can, the fact that you can do that, and the fact that you can understand someone and see the beauty in every single person, if you just spend an hour talking to them, that's something that can't be taken for granted, right? The fact that there's a world full of over 8 billion people, all of which have their own stories and their own opinions. Like, how could you ever have a problem, right? Because everyone is going through something, right? Like, forget about you, forget about your school. Think about the fact that there's people in England, right? Or there's people in Africa or there's, <laughs> or there's people in like Russia or like the stuff going on in the world, which is all kind of terrible, but it's all built on hatred. And it's the fact that there's people who are unwilling to sit and talk to people. And I think the world would be full of a lot more love if everyone had their own podcast that they can interview all the people that they hated, right? And I think there's something so beautiful about that. The fact that if you can fully understand someone, you couldn't hate them, right? Because yeah. everyone who's ever hurt me, like we were saying before, who I try to understand, I have so much love for them because I know what they've been through, right? And I could imagine how hard it is to feel the way they feel about me. Because I felt I've hated people before, you know? And I mean, I don't really hate anyone now, but definitely there's moments where I'm like, fuck you, right? <laughs> but like, if you really take the time to understand people, even like not even conversation, but just like look at the way that they act, look at the way they treat people and really think about why that happens and appreciate how beautiful it is, whether they're a terrible person or an awesome person, appreciate the beauty in both sides of that, then it's just, it becomes a lot easier to live and it becomes a lot easier to be a human being, which is hard to be. Yeah, it's amazing, man. If you enjoyed that segment with Connor Paulzak, then you're going to love the full one and a half hour length podcast that I filmed with him. It's going to be releasing this Sunday at noon, so make sure you don't miss it. Hit the link in the description now to make sure that you're the first one to see it.